sharp snout, bony tubercles. Fleshy stalk that dangles it like a lure to lure fish into its mouth. Amazing chemical mimicry. The color patterns on their wing are formed by tens of thousands of tiny scales. The largest land arthropod of all. Coconut crabs will eat anything. Quite extraordinary. The, the eyes look like they're a cluster of little jewels. Waving them around, hanging upside down, fanning uh, to attract mates. Uh, well, historically, people who were kind of biologists studied everything about these organisms. Taxonomy, the classification. They went out into the field and collected specimens, so they observed their behaviors. How things behave. Their reproductive behaviors. How they grow. Migratory behaviors. And their lifestyles. Most of the time when we study behaviors in animals, we're seeking for a deeper understanding of similar behaviors in ourselves. The guys put on the show, and the females can then select the showiest. Other times, it's just the pursuit of knowledge. It's a huge energy investment to make these feathers, to carry them around, to not be eaten by a monkey or a tiger or something. That means that this is a vigorous individual. Females drive what you see here. I'm an ichthyologist. I study fish. I don't study all fish. But this is a catfish, OK? The bushy-nosed catfish. These fleshy tentacles mimic a group of larvae swarming around the male's head. So this is a deceptive mating strategy that we call larval mimicry. So this is a batfish. One person actually licked the skin of this fish to determine whether or not it was venomous. It's just being curious about a question and then trying to gather the data and perform the experiments to answer that question. So be curious. Obviously, I think about this stuff all the time. I really, I really like this story. The Academy's shell collection, 10 million specimens. Over 200,000 bird specimens. Over 4 million insect specimens from around the world.